quality, and sensitivity. This in turn might be elaborated in the code with a brief explanatory paragraph such as, the local government and its personnel elevate service to others above self-interest and should not act in order to gain financial or other material benefits for themselves, their family, or friends. The local government and its personnel are committed to being responsive to and meeting the needs and expectations of all citizens by providing the highest level of service as possible. After any interaction, the local government and its personnel should ensure that those served and fellow public servants feel that they were respected, fairly treated, listened to, and involved. Or take another example. What if the local government personnel identify the moral value of honesty as being a core value of their work? In such a case, an appropriate ethical principle that can be derived from the moral value of honesty might be stated as follows. The local government and its personnel have a duty to declare any private interests relating to their public duties and to take steps to resolve any conflicts arising in a way that protects the public interest. This can also be elaborated in the code with its own brief explanatory paragraph, such as, the local government personnel cannot serve two masters, and they must do all that they reasonably can to anticipate when conflicts between their interests might arise, and to prevent this from happening whenever possible. When it is not possible to avoid a conflict of interest, the public servant should declare that this conflict exists and seek advice from a supervisor to resolve the conflict of interest. Assuming now that we have an effective code of ethics rooted in the most important moral values and principles for that institution, how then do we know when integrity is achieved? In this case, the answer lies in establishing appropriate indicators for integrity and routinely taking stock of the status quo based on these indicators. We'll be working on identifying examples of just such indicators within this workshop. Finally, how do we sustain integrity over time in our institutions of local governance and in the men and women who serve there? Primarily, this is achieved by institutionalizing integrity into the identity, the character of the local government. Often described as professionalization, once any public institution evolves to a point where its reputation for integrity, quality, and effectiveness is established, the stakeholders concerned have internalized these character attributes at a personal level. They're proud to be public servants and proud to be associated with an institution that enjoys such high public esteem. The leaders and managers of such a public institution take particular care to keep that institutional ethos alive and well keeping moral awareness raised, and building into the standard operations of that public institution such measures as regular training in the Code of Ethics and regular deliberative meetings of the staff where people can air their ethical concerns and dilemmas and seek common ground in finding solutions. In summary, we have to get the balance right. Our local government institutions must embrace both the compliance approach the setting of standards of behavior that are actively monitored and enforced, and the aspirational approach. This is a challenge both for the leaders and managers of any institution, but also at the individual level. Institutions consist of people, and values and in institutional integrity is fundamentally a function of ensuring alignment between persons of integrity and the institutions they shape. In this workshop, we'll take a practical look at how best to achieve integrity, starting by raising consciousness within the institutions and among its stakeholders about the leading challenges and integrity problems we face. We'll consider the underlying causes of corruption, as well as the most powerful sources of motivation and support of integrity, what we actually value and need to value to achieve what we want and to be who we are. We'll also be giving attention to how we audit the systems, standards, and procedures and the extent to which they, as integrity tools, cover what we need. Ultimately, however, our goal is to assist you to establish how your local government institution, in close cooperation with leading civil society organizations, can strengthen the culture of integrity within the institution and sustain it when it comes under pressure. Thank you.